Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So it's me again. My name is Igor, and now we are going to talk on a bit uh, different tool, um, which is some kind of a complementary tool in our One API toolkit, but at the same time, quite important one, uh, which is expected to help you to migrate your existing CUDA codes to uh, DPC++. Um, so actually we have more than enough time for that uh, and uh, I will be quite short in the theory itself and then we will go to the dev cloud and I'll show how you can um, use it with a uh, one API samples which we um, provide in the open source project. Um, so maybe this slide you've already seen but I want to to mention um, that uh, as you can see, the compatibility tool in the One API Intel products, so not the in, in industry initiative, but in the Intel real Intel products and toolkits, um, is uh, takes one of the central places, uh, just because we see this is uh, like a, quite a, an important tool which should help you um, to um, easily jump uh, in programming with. Uh, uh, with DPC++. It's even not uh, always um, a migration of a real code which can be beneficial for you, but even if, you, if you're familiar with CUDA and want to see how to do this or that stuff in the DPC++, you can write your simple um, code which you use to, to, um, uh, to write in your uh, CUDA applications and to see if the um, similar functionality is possible in DPC++ or not. And I, I, I would say that actually almost all the functionality is possible. I will go in more details what, um, how it is actually implemented. Um, so the idea is that uh, you have your um, source code um, in, written in CUDA and we, at this moment we do support quite a wide range of versions i think it starts with version 8 and up to uh, don't want to be wrong but definitely it's 9 9.1 10 10.1 11 i think it's also supported um, <clears throat> so it is uh, it's wide range of a CUDA code which is supported and um, we are passing this code as an input to the compatibility tool and um, the code is able to generate on the output the human readable C++ code. Uh, I would say it is SQL code, um, but uh, there may be some um, extensions used, and it was before SQL 2020 was released, extensions used which, which can be specific to DPC++. So the focus is really more on uh, on the DPC++ again, since it's not a part of our industry initiative, it's a part of our toolkit, which is toolkit which is dedicated for our um, um, own uh, hardware fine tuning and so on. By the way, um, to avoid this question, uh, it's not doing something special for FPGA. So the idea is that it can generate the code. Uh, you can fine tune it and finally run on FPGA, but there is no something, some special um, migration path for, for FPGA targets. <coughs> Sorry. Um, quite important statement is uh, it can do 80 to 90 percent uh, of the co uh, code migration. It's uh, actually um, non precise estimate. So, because um, for some cases it can do even 100% migration and the, the code which is migrated, it, you can uh, go and, and compile it uh, out of box. But in many cases, you definitely need to take a look on what was migrated uh, in order to prevent some possible issues, if not in compile time, then at, at runtime. So um, it still requires, so it, it generates a skeleton of the code, right? And it's doing a lot of job. And um, tomorrow, uh, Steven will talk on, on his, real use case of the tool uh, but i i want to say that we have many other examples where the cool tool significantly reduced the amount of work um, which is uh, spent 
so the workflow is quite simple. Um, if you want to invoke the tool, you just type in the command line dpct command, and then passing a CUDA code as an input uh, parameter. And that's actually all if you want to migrate a small, simple code from CUDA to DPC++. However, we know that uh, in real world, we do have usually a large code basis, right? All existing projects, which has the build environment and build uh, tools like uh, make files, C make files, and, and all that stuff, right? So in order to simplify the migration of these kind of projects, uh, big projects, um, you can follow this um, flow. So you can start with the using of a spatial tool, which is also a part of a um, data parallel C++ compatibility tool, which is called intercept build. And this tool will uh, help you to generate so-called compilation database file. So this compilation database file um, uh, consists of uh, several important uh, uh, lines and um, it has all the information required to successfully um, parse your uh, initial uh, CUDA source code. So imagine that um, <clears throat> In order to migrate any code from one language to, to the other, right, you need initially to understand is your original CUDA code is correct or not, right? And uh, how is it implemented in, in NVCC itself, right? So NVCC requires uh, all header files for your code, right? And it requires quite often paths to your, uh, to your sources. Uh, to be included in the compilation line, as well as some macro definitions with minus D options. So if you are defining the macrosys via the command line and not via, uh, in the source code itself, then you also need to pass it as an as a input parameter to an uh, NVCC compiler. So uh, for, <clears throat> for our tool, uh, it is also required to pass the same data. So we also need to know the macros definitions. We also need to know uh, information on the paths to the header files. And usually this information is hidden in the make file, right? So in order to intercept this and to create a file with all that information, you can use this tool. It actually doesn't invoke any compilation, real compilation. Only uh, The only thing it does, it, uh, it parses your make file and it tries to get all the required for the tool information in order to check that uh, your original code is correct and in order to proceed with further migration process. So, uh, and this step consists of invoking this tool and on the next step, passing the generated uh, output file in the JSON format as a parameter to the DPCT tool with minus P option. So I will uh, sometime call um, DPC++ compatibility tool as simply compatibility tool or tool or DPCT, and it refers uh, to <clears throat> to the same actually uh, tool, right? And on the last step, but it's the most important, I think, it's verify the source for correctness and fix some parts which were not migrated. Um, there may be different reasons why it's not migrated, and we will take a look on uh, what what can be the root cause of that. Uh, for more details, also uh, go to this uh, um, documentation. You can find uh, all the steps. Actually, I'm going to explain here, there with um, quite useful uh, details. So, and this is an example of a simple, uh, we already on the previous, um, session we talked about how to implement the vector addition and in SQL, right? So um, here is a simple migration example of a CUDA code with a, a vector addition kernel um, to DPC++ code or SQL code via um, data parallel C++ compatibility tool. So as you can see, the tool is able to migrate uh, uh, a pre-processing um, directives. So the uh, include of CUDA headers is uh, um, migrated to the include of a corresponding um, SQL headers. But uh, the most interesting part here is the include of this DPCT header files. And this is important. So in reality, what the tool generates as an output 
is not a pure um, SQL or DPC++ code. It also using, it may uh, also use some wrapper functions or so-called helper functions in order to get a similar to CUDA functionality. So in this specific code, there are not so many examples like this, but uh, everything which starts in the DPCT namespace is actually implemented inside these header files. So it's quite easy to see uh, what is implemented by just going to these uh, sources and checking, but always be quite uh, careful with the usage of these uh, uh, DPCT uh, functions. Uh, and by be careful, I mean, you need actually to know what exactly happening, right? So what exactly happening inside this device extension class? And what exactly happening when you invoke a default queue method of this device extension class? Because the behavior may be um, a bit different from uh, your expectations from the pure SQL language. So again, the idea of these header files is to create um, a bridge between CUDA uh, functionality and the uh, functionality in the SQL, because sometimes it's not easy to map exactly, precisely one uh, API from CUDA to the same API in SQL. But um, honestly, almost, uh, everything is available. The only question uh, on is uh, how deep you need to go on the lower level API to program this on that. So let me explain, you know, in, in CUDA, um, uh, there is a so-called uh, driver level API, right? And this allows you to do a lot of low level stuff. So for, for DPC++, the same functionality can be if you go to program on OpenCL directly in your SQL code, or if you go and use level zero API calls inside your uh, DPC++ code. This is definitely not a good idea because you're mixing high level language and uh, lower language API, but you with that lower level programming, you can get uh, any mm, functionality which exists in CUDA. Um, yeah, there, there are uh, less than a percent of the functions which are not available. But the idea is that the percentage of the functions not available in SQL is much higher. So that's why sometimes you need some kind of a wrapper function or helper functions, which under the hood invokes this lower level API, like three or four or five uh, lower level um, OpenCL or level zero APIs in order to, um, create this bridge between one function and CUDA and the same functionality in, in, in SQL. And definitely the long-term would be plan would be to avoid using of this DPCT namespace. So if you see that you can uh, rewrite this code with no usage of a D DPCT namespace, it is recommended to do that. Because in this particular case, um, it is some kind of technical limitations of the tool that it cannot uh, generate the, um, the queue which you can pass as a parameter for function, for example. And uh, we do uh, open a feature request to allow this, but for tool, it's quite complicated sometimes to understand what is device used and what is the queue used. And that's why it, the tool by default using this simple algorithm, it always, um, getting the current device and returning some default queue uh, from this current device. So this is a quite common code which is generated by the tool. But you can um, do what you want in the generated code actually. <clears throat> so I, I, I think I explained the, the idea of this. Um, and yeah, note that with no these header files, you will be not able to compile the code. Right? So in that case, if you migrated the code and will take um, any other compiler and not provide these header files, it will fail to compile it, right? But the good thing is that you can actually take these headers. It's not a, a problem with you. Just uh, one more dependency, which is not uh, sometimes good enough. So with the kernel itself uh, was migrated to corresponding SQL. So there is no um, something special here. You can see that the ND item is, is passed as an argument, which means uh, that the ND range uh, will be used uh, inside the um, invocation of a parallel for. 
And uh, inside the code here, how this thread IDX in CUDA is mapped to uh, DPC++ get local ID. So it's quite straightforward. You don't need to spend the time on, on, on rewriting it uh, by your own hand, so the tool can do this uh, all for you. Then uh, a good thing is that, since I said it can um, migrate the pre-processing uh, macrosys, it can also um, migrate uh, this vector size, for instance, uh, uh, to the output code, which is very nice. So again, um, the, the, the mechanism in uh, enqueuing the kernels and submitting comment groups to the queue in DPC++ is different from the CUDA. That's why um, there is nothing here but uh, the code uh, generated to create a queue and link to some device. And further, uh, yeah, CUDA malloc can be easily mapped to a SQL malloc device. So we are using the unified shared memory here, by the way. and um, passing this queue as an argument to this malloc device function. So then uh, we are doing a submit operation as usual and inside uh, invoking a, a parallel for uh, as a method of a, a handler class and uh, passing the ND range and uh, passing a local and global size Yes, you can see, and then the Lambda function, which invokes the, the function. By the way, this is quite common um, way how you can um, write your code in, in DPC++. So all you need to do is to pass the, uh, the item class, item underscore CT1 in this example to it, and, and the data, and it will work fine. If you're working with buffers and not with a unified shared memory, then each buffer had a, a, a member function called get pointer. So you can do exactly the same uh, with a, um, programming with a buffers, but uh, pass uh, pointers via get pointer uh, function for each buffer you want to pass to a function. Uh, finally, what we are doing is we are copying the memory back uh, from a device, right? Um, so we have some uh, array um, created and initialized on, on, on the host side, and then we're doing the mem copy back. And there is one important uh, uh, difference with what is happening here. As you can see at the end of this, uh, of this invocation, we have a, uh, an explicit wait operation. So, and this is important because in DPC++, the mem copy operations are not blocking. So, and this can be a difference with a CUDA where these operations are blocking. And uh, yeah, just pay attention to that. So there is all, there are always some kind of, of a tricky thing you need to keep in mind, but uh, usually the the migration process is quite straightforward. And uh, note that you don't have uh, so many kernels in your real codes, right? Um, if you have five, six kernels, you can easily migrate all these kernels one by one uh, via the tool, and uh, then work further on the invocation of these kernels from, from your code. Um, by the way, uh, my statement about be careful with the DPCT um, namespace, here means that when, when the tool is generating unified shared uh, memory code, like in these examples, the default queue you are getting uh, has in order, in order property. So uh, in this case, um, if you will have a, a more kernel, in, uh, more submit, submit operations later on in the, in the code, um, then you don't need to explicitly synchronize because the queue is in order. So this is a specific, just take a look on the device extension uh, class and the implementation of what the default queue returns. So it's very good to see how it works or replace it with a pure, uh, with a queue creation, which you want, which really makes sense because in reality, in the most parts of your code, you are not creating the queue. Note that the creation of the queue is uh, quite um, 
uh, have a quite a high overhead. So once you create a queue and it has a new context, it means that all your kernels must be recompiled and, and, and it's an additional overhead. So what you're usually doing in your code is you're create, cre creating a queue once and then just passing the pointer to this queue to your uh, APIs, to your functions. So, so there are, one yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we avoid the, 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 this, uh, can you go to the next uh, previous slide? Yep. Can we avoid the line for DPCT? Because then we cannot compile this code in other compiler, right? It's not like generic. No, no, it's a generic, uh, a generic SQL code. The only difference you need to ship the, these headers. So it is still a pure C++ code. It doesn't use any non-C++ standard uh, features. And if you take any other compiler, which, um, and ship these wrappers, it may work, but the problem is we don't test it. So more probably it depends on, um, it depends on the features which are implemented in, inside DPCT headers. And uh, okay. So, so again, my recommendation would be if you are going, if you want to write a code targeting, um, many different devices and you want this to be compiled by different compiler implementations then please replace this uh, dpct with uh, more standard sql uh, stuff because this uh, current default device will work but if there will be some helper functions which provide some low level uh, functionality which is not available in the standard sql for example I don't know. So this line is actually more uh, DP, uh, C++ specific uh, wrapper, right? Yes, yes. So, so DPCT is, uh, header files is a set of wrappers, a set of classes implemented in pure C++, which allow you to, um, to get the, the same functionality which is available in CUDA which is not available in the SQL in one line, let's say, right? Because here for CUDA malloc, we do have exactly the same um, malloc device, right? Which can um, replicate the same behavior more or less. But there may be some uh, uh, functions in CUDA, which uh, requires three, four or five calls of uh, functions in SQL, right? And in order to better um, align this migration, uh, this additional, let's say, glue level or bridge level required in the form of uh, additional wrappers. Yeah, actually, if we use this wrapper, it's uh, actually easier for developer. Yes. But, uh, but if we are targeting different uh, device and we want to compile it with different compiler and we want to write a generic uh, source code, then it will be a problem. Yeah, it can be a, it can be a problem. So it's not uh, necessary will be, but if this wrapper will use some low level level zero APIs, for example, definitely this level zero APIs will be not available with our compiler, right? So because again, um, I think it it's more or less generic issue for SQL uh, uh, itself because under the hood there are many different devices, right? And not all the devices um, can support uh, uh, same set of features, right? So that's a that's a problem. For for instance, the USM itself, there may be some devices which doesn't support it. So it's better to add the additional check here that it, it's actually support USM first. <laughs> So like maybe uh, if we just write uh, more code without uh, this wrapper, maybe we need uh, five more code, uh, five more or more lines. So maybe for each device we can check and yes, apply yes. a specific feature and yeah, but uh, it looks uh, more verbose, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite natural because in CUDA itself, right, we're targeting only one device, so we don't care about it, right? So we are trying to move it to more 
generic uh, to target any device and that's how it will it will require some additional efforts in order to handle different devices so that's true <coughs> uh, just a last question uh, like uh, currently i am trying to write uh, some kind of code like this so to run a different device not like a cuda that is more specific to uh, nvidia so uh, what will be the uh, pitfall for that if I want to do this, like the performance issue, right? For in uh, NVIDIA. Yeah, I will. I will show you in the next few slides, uh, and tomorrow Stephen will talk about the performance issues. Yeah, definitely, it it will depends on on this kind of really simple code. You will not see any performance uh, difference. Um, again, depends on on the implementation of compiler you are using. I know that. Uh, code play implementation, uh, which is a standalone uh, compute CPP compiler, it runs really slow on, on NVIDIA, but uh, uh, the code play implementation uh, introduced in open source um, DPC++ compiler, which we have, it, uh, it works quite well. So for that code, if you will run this code, this output code on NVIDIA <coughs> hardware and compare with performance, there will be almost no difference. So on the simple codes, on the simple, so, simple in quotes, I mean, uh, so the code which is not really highly optimized, so not using very low level um, programming to fine tune the performance in the CUDA for, for that kind of simple codes with no usage of that, uh, it will be quite similar. So like uh, if we don't have any compute intensive area, then we can just use uh, SQL so that we can port it uh, to different device. But for compute intensive task, we will stick in, uh, to the CUDA, right? Like this. Uh, do, do you, uh, like uh, if we have some uh, uh, source code and we, the source code is mostly just a normal calculation, no compute intensive task inside the code, then we can just uh, write as uh, a generic uh, uh, SQL. Uh, no, no, it's code. it's even for compute intensive code. So by simple code, I don't mean non-compute intensive. For 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 GPU code, you need to use the compute in uh, intensive code uh, to benefit. But I mean uh, in this in this example, right? It's all, all only Kudak Malak and the quite simple calculations inside the kernel, right? So there is no fine tuning um, using spatial uh, low level uh, intrinsics, right? So if a code is fine-tuned with intrinsics uh, uh, usage extensively, then you will probably see the, the difference in, in, in the performance. And uh, moreover, I'm not sure if all the intrinsics can be mapped to, um, to a corresponding uh, DPC++ uh, alternative. So I will, I will talk on, on, on that uh, later. Okay. Okay. Because if there will be some API which is not supported by the tool, so in, in, in SQL, DPC++, there is simply no alternative to that, right? Then the tool will, will, will file you, uh, uh, generate a warning on that. Like, please take a, uh, take a look on that. Yeah, I, I'm just new here. Uh, just last question uh, regarding CUDA. Uh, like in SQL, we are using SQL standard uh, and uh, uh, use, uh, using different uh, compiler for the implementation, but uh, in CUDA, CUDA is like, a, uh, uh, it has its own uh, compiler and it has its own uh, standard or, and also uh, same thing about the OpenMP. OpenMP is a standard or uh, it's also a language? So yeah, Open, OpenMP is a standard and it's supported by different vendor. CUDA is a standard, but it's only supported by NVIDIA, right? So it's proprietary standard. We are providing a standard uh, which is a SQL, right? Um, which is also some uh, some kind of OpenMP, but in the initial uh, stages, right? So, um, like I, I tried to run uh, OpenMP uh, in Intercom. It's great that you have so many questions, but yeah. maybe yeah. track of the schedule. Um, you are kindly asked to, uh, um, we have this Q&A session at the end. This is the best okay. place to go into detail. Thanks. Okay. Sorry. Thank you.
Yeah, but it's very good that uh, you ask uh, these questions uh, in order to to explain all the details. It's not no issue. I think we're, we're good in time. So yeah, uh, we can maybe ask. I can ask you later in the yeah yeah the no problem. Session, yeah. Yeah. So some BKMs known. So one is migrate incrementally. It's quite, mm, so with the situation with the tool itself is um, sometimes you can get a lot of errors when trying to migrate and you need to understand why you're getting it. One example, for example, uh, you, you're trying to invoke it, but you don't pass a compilation database. So the tool doesn't know what were your um, options used um, to compile original CUDA code. So it's simply um, think that uh, your initial CUDA code is wrong and generating this kind of errors. Then there may be some kind of uh, crashes, but nowadays it's really rare. But anyway, um, changing uh, the type of migration from the batched mode when you're passing a lot of CUDA files to migrate uh, at the same time to file by file concept, sometimes uh, helps a lot to understand the, the uh, root cause of the error or root cause of the issue you're getting with. So it's one approach. The, the other uh, one which is usually missed uh, when people starting, when if, you, if your project is already built, don't forget to invoke make clean before running intercept build. So it is confused by that. So because it doesn't, uh, as far as I, I um, remember, it doesn't require a compilation of your project, but it requires uh, the invocation of a make uh, file itself. So that the output from the make file uh, makes uh, some sense. So that's why you always make clean before running intercept build. Um, this is a spoiler for, for the presentation with, which will be shown um, tomorrow. And um, in that example, uh, the open source code written in CUDA, like easy wave code. And I would say it's not highly optimized code. So it doesn't use any intrinsic or spatial low level tuning to get the maximum performance on the CUDA code. So it's, it's, um, it's quite, let's say, usual uh, implementation of, uh, with the CUDA. And um, this code was ported with a compatibility tool and um, this, uh, code with some minor changes was finally uh, compiled for all supported at that moment uh, target devices. So we were able to run it on Intel CPU, on Intel uh, GPU, uh, both integrated and discrete, uh, and even on FPGA architectures. And, um, and for the performance comparison with a, a native CUDA implementation on NVIDIA P100 and V100, it was uh, intolerance of 5%. So it was almost a uh, similar performance, which you can, you can see with native implementation on CUDA. So, but it, it's, it, it should be uh, on a workload basis. So you cannot predict really um, um, how fast it, it, it would be in advance, right? But uh, you need to understand that finally, the SQL code maps to some native CUDA implementation because SQL code is an abstraction, right? It finally goes to OpenCL code on the lower level to level zero code or to CUDA API. So that's why it, in, in, in reality, it shouldn't be so different from a performance point of view from the CUDA. It's only the question how good it is uh, mapped to the CUDA API finally by the compiler. So, and now let's go to the demo. Um, I will show it on the dev cloud and uh, Michael already talked on, on that today. Um, so you can also follow these steps yourself right now or later on, and you can do it on your own machine. If you, if you get a base toolkit, then you can do this, or it's much easier to, to just uh, connect to the dev cloud and perform this operation. So just clone the uh, folder with a, <clears throat> a GitHub project with the samples, and then um, go to this uh, tools migration uh, subfolder in order to, to use the tool. By the way, on the dev cloud, we don't have a CUDA SDK installed or, or NVCC installed. 
um, definitely, and we don't have a, a NVIDIA hardware, of course, but uh, in order to run the tool, all you need to have is uh, header files, CUDA header files from CUDA SDK. And uh, to get this, um, yeah, you can get it in advance uh, on some of, of your machines and simply put it uh, to a directory with a sample. So I will show you how I did uh, on my machine. Okay, so now let's... Okay, so um, to reiterate, just log into the DevCloud, get an access, and on the bottom you have an option to launch the Jupyter Lab um, here. So uh, there you can invoke a new terminal and uh, it will look exactly like, like this. And moreover, it's so easy to download or upload something there. So if you need to download any file, just right click and, and download it to your machine. Or if you need to upload your project, um, you can um, easily click this link and select any files from your machine to, to be uploaded there. So that's, a, that's exactly what I did with the include uh, file. So here in the include directory, you can see that I put the uh, CUDA header files in order to use the compatibility tool on, on the dev cloud. So now, um, yeah, I when you invoke with terminal node, that you will be on the on the login node. And if you will need to um, to run your uh, migrated code on the real node, then you can get uh, the interactive mode and and log into a specific uh, uh, compute node. Then, or you can submit uh, the job from the login node to this compute node. But we are not going to do this in in, in part of this uh, demo. So again, this is. This is a folder in one API samples under tools migration. So there are three different uh, projects where which you can try. I want to show a basic one and then switch to a most uh, um, complex one, let's say. But uh, I think the best example will be shown tomorrow by Stefan on the real uh, bigger uh, code sample. So if you go to a vector edition um, <clears throat> and go to the sources, you can see that this, there is this vector addition file. So we can actually open and take a look and that, that is more or less exactly the same what I was showing on the, on the slides, except probably that there is this error handling here. And this is in, uh, important because the tool will always um, remind you on that. Uh, so that uh, the way how the CUDA handles the errors is based on the error codes, right? So we are trying to understand what is returned by the CUDA API and then uh, parse uh, it in the way you want. But the SQL, as we talked earlier, it's a um, exception-based approach. So now, first step I, I would recommend you to try is to invoke a DPCT with minus help to see what actually the tools allow you to do. So, and you can see a long list of options and many of these options are so interesting and, 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 and important. So first you can uh, influence the code generation, right? So the final code, which is generated by the tool, uh, SQL code, you can influence which features it can it can use. For example, one interesting would be um, you can generate the code with a named lambdas or with unnamed lambdas. So by default, it's off. So <clears throat> it generates uh, the um, the kernels with unnamed lambda like like in the SQL 2020 standard, right? Or because it was supported by DPC++ and is still supported. But you can influence it and, and make sure that the, uh, the Lambda names are generated. But the other interesting feature is that you can actually um, change the usage of a USM. So you can avoid USM generation in order to, uh, to generate more uh, buffer uh, memory model approach. And uh, this can be useful if you want to use uh, some um, 
compiler vendors in the future, which still doesn't support SQL 2020, for example. So it, it depends on, on your requirements and your final goals. If you want to avoid USM and, and write a code on the buffers, and I've seen these cases, um, then you can do this uh, with this uh, additional option passed to the tool. You can also uh, um, change and force the uh, format of the output files. So you can um, make the formatting in LVM coding style and Google coding style and all that stuff. The other interesting thing is to keep original code. So this one means that the original code will be inserted in the generated DPC++ files uh, as in the form of a comments. And this is also interesting. And you can see here, there are even some examples of how you can invoke the tool, uh, how you can add additional extra arguments like this minus std c++11. So note that your original CUDA code can use some c++11 features, but the tool doesn't expect it to be set as a default. So in that case, it, it may fail to um, properly parse your input CUDA code because it doesn't expect C++ features to be used there. And this is an option how you can pass it further to the parser of a DPCT in order to, um, to be able to correctly um, you know, recognize the input CUDA code. Okay, so now once we know uh, that let's, okay. I lost my mouse, <laughs> sorry. Hey Igor, someone yeah. just uh, questions if you can increase, if you can increase the font size. Yeah, I will try because we've, uh... okay. Is it better? I think so. Okay. I, I can see perfect. Yeah. Okay. The person agrees. Thanks. So what I'm doing right now is I'm invoking the compatibility tool. I'm passing a path to the head, uh, uh, NV, uh, NVIDIA uh, CUDA header files, right? Because I said that it is important because your original CUDA code does has this includes. So I put it to my um, home directory and working and I'm passing as an input uh, the original CUDA source file. So then you need to take a look on what uh, the compatibility tool is giving you as an output. Yeah, it, it, it has a feature to after detect compilation database, but since we haven't used this intercept tool and our project is so simple, it's, uh, you may um, ignore this. You can also um, pass in root and out root options. So to specify the folder where your original um, CUDA source is located and the folder where you want to put your migrated code by, by default, it is DPCT output. And now a processing is happening and you can see that it was uh, processed and there is a, a link which is provided here with a reference to diagnostics issues. So all the warnings you are getting, right? They're happening in, in, in this form. Uh, they're appearing in this form on your screen. And here you can see that in this case, it was one warning about the incompatibility in the approach on how to handle the return error code and exception. So this is really uh, something not really critical, uh, but sometimes it can lead um, to, um, uh, to some compilations errors uh, in your code I will show later on. So here, if you go to DPCT output, you can see that uh, uh, vector addition um, file is generated with this DPCPP uh, extension, which means it's DPC++ code. And you can see that um, this is actually uh, a DPC++ code generated as an output and all these warnings which are uh, issued in the uh, standard output, they are always also inlined into the code. So you can see here that we are assigning status to, to this operation and probably you need to remove this because it is not required anymore. So in, in that case, uh, since you don't need to handle it in this way, you need to remove it, that. Okay. 
So then um, I just want to show you uh, some um, other options you can pass, right? So for example, if you, yeah, note that if you will try to rerun the tool and this folder dpct output is still there, right? Um, then the tool will issue uh, an error on that because you need to specify output uh, directory or you need to remove the old one. So I, I'm just removing the, the, the old results um, to not overlay the command line, but it, it should be quite easy to do whatever you want. So, and now the example would be, okay, let me show how to put the output in, in a different folder. So in that case, I want the tool to enable um, template argument deduction feature of C++ 17, and I want to put the results in the uh, directory test one. So now the, 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 the output goes to a directory one. And here you can see again, the generated code file. Let's take a look on what is inside. And you can see here that now there is no, um, the template argument deduction is used. So there is no end your um, range uh, used here anymore. So it should be quite obvious to show you in this way. So if we invoke the tool again, in the default mode, and if we, okay. If we will run the diff, right, on the test one, and the DPCT output produce code, so you can see that in that case, the template argument deduction is used. So um, the main purpose, what I want to show is what you can really control the generation. So for example, I haven't tried this one, but let's take a look. So with um, USM level um, restricted, right? So if we just will reuse this one, in order to avoid the usage of a, uh, okay, I cannot. So the default is to use the USM, just because it's easy to map uh, uh, the code uh, of CUDA to, to the SQL using the, um, using the SQL, um, the SQL uh, unified shared memory. So now um, let's generate one more. Okay, just want to show you by the way, the, the error that if, if you already have the, the folder, with uh, valid results, then um, the tool will issue you this message. It's still using, uh, okay, I'll probably miss that. Okay, so uh, let me show when you um, one more example. Oh. oh, and by the way, the keep original feature is uh, so useful. So I, I would definitely recommend you to pass this keep original, um, keep original uh, option in order to preserve the original CUDA code as a comments in the generated code. Sometimes it's, it will be quite easy to map, um, to understand how the code is mapped between CUDA and, and DPC++. So now let me go back to, to more complicated examples. So here we do have a real, a more real project, which has a um, um, make file, 
right? And we want to, to do the intercept build in order to, to generate the intercept build make in order to generate the uh, compilation database. So here you will find that now we have generated compile common JSON file. So if we open this, um, you can see that it, it consists of this, uh, this information and then our tool will be able to, to use all these directories and all these macros um, from uh, this JSON file. So it's obviously, it's quite simple example still, as you can see in the compile commands JSON, but uh, it's just to show the, uh, you the approach of how you can, how you can use the tool. And uh, okay, now if we run the tool, so you can see now that uh, I am invoking the tool uh, I'm again passing the CUDA headers. Again, if you do have a CUDA SDK installed, then you don't need to pass this because the tool will try to identify the default location of uh, uh, CUDA headers itself. So, but if you have it, it, it in some uh, spatial folder, then you need to do this. And here we are passing minus P and compile common JSON. And I'm passing uh, the folder where our original sources are located and the output directory for migration. And, and you can see that the tool generated the warnings here. And in, in this case, we have more warnings than, than in the previous one. So it's again about um, return error code. And um, this is also um, quite similar that the version related API is different in SQL. So you need to, to take a look on each of these warning and uh, I want to show you this link because it's quite useful and it's very nice that okay I haven't copied it it's uh, it's very interesting that uh, that here if you go to this website it has the information about the warning the message and then it has the detailed help and even more sometimes it has the actionable um, actionable items or actions you need to, to follow, actionable advices, right? So it has all the possible diagnostics listed here. And sometimes it even has a code samples which you, for better understanding and so on. So it, it helps a, a lot, I think, uh, in order to proceed with uh, further um, code modifications. So when you can see here, why sometimes it, it, we are saying it can migrate 80 to 90% because in some corner cases, you will need to rewrite your um, fine tuned CUDA code to something more appropriate for, for DPC++. Okay, okay, sorry. So I don't want to go into more details then. I think we are on top of, of the time, right? So now um, let's maybe address uh, the questions, right? 